Let's go. Say a spectator selects a card and loses it somewhere in the center of the deck. Then the spectator randomly selects a group of cards and they spot their card in that pile. The magician is able to take those cards and instantly make the selected card vanish and appear back in the deck. It's so insane that people will call it impossible. All right, y'all, so check this out. For those of you who are curious, today I'm gonna be using these Stranger Things playing cards by Theory11. I actually love that holographic back design, it looks so nice. We start the card trick by handing the deck over to the spectator, and they can shuffle it to their heart's content, or until they die, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, then once they're done shuffling, they can pick out any card they want. So let's say they select that one, take a look at this card and memorize it, right? We'll lose it now somewhere back in the center of the deck. And I'm gonna try something, I guess, a little different. Right, so I wanna make this kind of as random as possible. So maybe just one more shuffle. And then I'm gonna dribble through the cards like this. And I want you to call it stop whenever you'd like. So let's just say you call it stop right around here about halfway. Ideally, I want you to hold your hand out like this. But since you can't, let's pretend this tuck case is your hand, right? I'll take half the deck, I'll leave it face down on your hand. And we'll take the other half, whatever you call it stop and take a couple of cards off here from the top. Now I'm gonna show you each one of these cards. At the end of this, you're gonna tell me if your card's in this pile or not. Not while I'm going through, right? I don't want you giving me any signal. Don't don't wink at me, don't whistle, don't like nod your head, none of that. Just as I go through each one of these cards, I want you just to think in your mind if you see your card or not. If you don't see it, don't say anything. If you see it, don't say anything, all right? There we go, fair enough. Now, for the first time, did you see your card in this packet? You did, okay, perfect, perfect. That means things are going well. Check this out. Um, how many cards would I do? One, two, three, four, and five. Check it out. If I just give it a wave like this and the magic move here, a quick riffle. I don't know if you heard, but I only heard four cards. One, two, three, four. Just four cards. I want you to take a look at the top card of this packet, right? As fair as possible, that's not it. That's okay. That's fine. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. This, this kind of helped me out because now if you take this packet, turn it face up, go through all the cards and look at one that's, or look for one that's slightly different than the rest. This one, because this one is the only one facing in the opposite direction. Now, what was your card? The 10 of diamonds? We'll check it out. Here we have the 10 of diamonds. Boom. Oh. What up crew, it is Magic Monday, and this is your place to learn magic, master your performance, and captivate audiences. The effect I'm sharing with you today is a variation on the Biddle trick. It's such a simple move to pull off, but it's extremely powerful when done correctly. Now, without any further ado, make sure you smash that like button and get ready to share with all your friends. Now grab your favorite deck, and let's do it. All right, yo, so here we are at the tutorial. Now, I guess just some more information. I would say this is probably ranges from high level beginner to low level intermediate type effect. But I'd love the fact of how powerful it actually is when you perform. So uh, if you haven't seen any kind of Biddle card tricks before, this one is gonna be fantastic. Now to start, you want to hand the deck over to the spectator and allow them to shuffle it up, of course, as much as they want, giving them some sense of control. Now, once they're done, they're gonna go ahead and select a card the exact same way they did in the performance. And let's just say it happens to be the two of clubs, right? They can take the two of clubs and you want them to return it back to the top of the deck. Or I guess there are two ways that you can do this. Uh, you wanna control this card third from the top. That's your main goal. So the way that I did it in the performance is I did an overhand shuffle control. If you don't know how to do that, I'll put the link on the screen. I put, put out a mini masterclass on it. But I throw over a packet of cards like this. Then I in jog, well, I usually just in jog, but now I'm gonna peel off two more cards from the top here. So one, two cards peeled off. Now I in jog, sorry about earlier. Now I in jog. And then I overhand shuffle like this. So when I go back, I can even pause here for a minute, talk to the spectator, and then I can come back here, push down and forward, and then continue overhand shuffling like this until I get to this break and I toss the rest of the cards over. And if we take a look now, the spectator's card will be third from the top, right? The two of clubs. So you can either do it that way, or you can do one of my favorite moves known as the Marlow Tilt. So as a spectator is looking at their cards, you wanna grab a break underneath the top two cards. So either you can do a pinky count or you can literally just count two cards with your thumb. That's probably easier. Pinky count is just a bit more, you know, like you know your stuff, right? You feel a bit more professional doing the pinky count, right? So if you don't know how to do that, put the link on the screen. Great move to learn. But Marlow Tilt, you put up these two cards here 
Now you tilt the deck downward, so your wrist kind of goes down palm in your direction, obviously. And then you pretend to lose it somewhere in the center. And then because of the depth perception that people will have on their end, it'll make it look like the card's going somewhere in the center. And then I just shift these cards back and forth like this. And so it looks like the card's lost somewhere in the center, but of course it is third from the top. So either one of those things you can do, or if you know anything else, you can do that as well. So third from the top. Now, uh, the dribble that I'm about to do just gives them like a false sense of, again, control, that they're picking out where we're stopping. And they are, but it just doesn't matter at all. So you give the deck a dribble, you can do whatever you want. If you wanna give the deck a cut, that's fine too. Give the deck a dribble. And a lot of what we're gonna be doing now is gonna be focused on the fact that there's a time delay between our move here versus when we eventually come to the selection. So now we stop here, you tell the spectator, I want you to put your hand out like this. As soon as they put their hand out, turn this half over, put it in their hand, say you're gonna keep that half and I'm gonna keep this half. And where you call that stop, I'm gonna take out a couple of cards. You don't wanna count out how many cards you're taking, but you do wanna stress the point that they call out stop and we stopped at a random point, even though this is the top half of the deck or top whatever amount of the deck. So you count off one, two, three, four, five. You don't do it, you don't count it off out loud. You just do it and making it seem very random, right? So you have these five cards and you turn all five over at once. And then you tell the spectator, I'm gonna go through each one of these five cards. And as I'm going through these five cards, I don't want you to give me any indication of whether you see your card or not. So I like to make a joke of, you know, some people wink at me, some people like whistle, whatever it is. I don't want any of that. So I just get like a nice, like a little laugh out of that. But then as I start going through, this is where the, the biddle trick kind of comes into play. So you're holding the deck now. This is, I'm gonna get a bit more in detail now. You're holding this packet, you're holding this half of the deck in a biddle grip. So thumb comes on the bottom, middle ring finger on top here. So it's gonna look something like this. And this I'm holding with my dominant or right hand, right? So it's gonna look something like this. If you're a lefty, you'd be holding the cards like this, right? So now I'm holding the cards like this. I take my non-dominant hand underneath the deck like this. My four fingers go underneath the deck and I peel off the top card with my thumb like this. And I say, I'm just gonna show you these cards one at a time, right? So I show them this first card. I come back. This card goes underneath the deck here, peel off the second card. Again, show this, come back. This packet again goes underneath here. And then I peel off again here. As I peel off, we of course know that this is Spectator's card because it was the third card. As you peel off here, grab a pinky break underneath this card. So you peel off, show it to the Spectator. And then when you come back, you're actually gonna ditch this card on the bottom of this packet. So as you come back, let's see if I can show you from this view. You show this card to the spectator. As you come back here, and you, in the action of peeling this card, you're gonna dish this card. So up to speed, I'll show you up to speed, then I guess break it down a little bit more. Up to speed, you bring it here, peel off this card, show, peel off this card, show, right? And it doesn't have to be super fast because again, you're showing the card every time. So one more time, a bit more in detail. You peel off this card, grab a break, show it to the spectator, come back, dish the card down here. Your thumb is gonna grab this card like this. As your top thumb or non-dominant thumb peels off this card, show, peel off, show. And you wanna make it seem very consistent, right? You don't want the, as you're peeling off, right? As you're peeling off, you don't wanna like be stuck here for a while trying to get a grip and then peel off. You wanna make everything seem like a very fluid, very natural motion. So what I would actually recommend as you practice this move, just practice peeling off, bringing this card under, peeling off, bringing this card under, peeling off, bringing this card under. This way you get the natural feel of it. And then once you're ready to start shifting that card from one packet to the other, peel off, peel off, peel off, break, come underneath, dish the card, peel off, peel off. And you'll see you'll have dished that card uh, at the bottom of this packet. Right, so now that you've done that, you've shown five cards to the spectator, you've ditched their selected card to this pile, hand that over to them. Don't make a big deal out of it. Say, I'm gonna give you this half. And then you're gonna bring the focus immediately to this packet here. You don't want them to think that anything happened weird with that packet. Immediately bring it back and say, okay, how many cards did I pull out? How many cards did I show you? And then they're like five, and you can validate that with counting five. Even though you have four, you're gonna count it the, the same way we just did, that's a biddle count, by the way. 
The same thing we did the bill account, we're gonna do the exact same thing here. I peel off one, peel off a second one, grab a pinky break. Again, when this goes underneath, I dish that card, peel off card number three, card number four, and card number five. So up to speed, it should seem quite believable that you're peeling off five cards and showing off five cards. And then all you have to do, something nice and easy, you could give it a shake, riffle. I like to kind of do like a, did you hear how many cards were actually riffled? It seems like one card disappeared. And they would think, oh, that's strange. I didn't hear anything. And then you can move everything out and say four cards. If you want, you can even hand them these four cards and they could take a look themselves and realize their card is not in this packet. I like to give like a false reveal at first by having them turn off the top card. That's not their card. And then I told them to slowly turn up this packet in their hand. Once they've done that, then I want them to see if they figure out anything that's different. Of course, they see one card is facing the opposite direction and then they can take that out to reveal the two of clubs. For more powerful effects, make sure you check out this video right over here. I promise you'll love it and people will go crazy. A huge shout out to all my Patreon producers and thank you, love you, see you soon.